Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about the process of finding the absolute extrema of a function on a closed interval. Remember that the extreme value theorem guarantees that if our function is continuous on the closed interval, it will achieve a maximum and a minimum. So to find that maximum and that minimum, we want to first find all critical points of the function on the open interval, a to b. Then we want to evaluate f, so the original function, at each of the critical points and at each endpoint, a and b. We will then have a list of y values. We want to compare those y values. The smallest one will be our absolute minimum, and the largest will be our absolute maximum. So let's take a look at doing just that. If we want to find the absolute extrema for the function 3x squared minus 24x minus 1 on the closed interval negative 1 to 5. First we want to double check that the extreme value theorem applies. We want to make sure that we believe this f of x is continuous on this closed interval. Well in this case f of x is a polynomial function and a polynomial function is continuous over the entire real line, so certainly it is continuous over this interval. Okay, so now we go on to step one, which is to find critical points. We learned in a previous video that finding critical points comes from finding any place where the first derivative is zero or where the first derivative is undefined. So either way, we need the first derivative. So our f prime will be 2 times 3, or 6x, minus 24 minus 0, or just 6x minus 24. Since this is a linear function, we're not going to find any critical points based on it being undefined, since it is defined everywhere. But setting it equal to 0 and solving, we get 6x equals 24, or x equals 4, as a critical point. Now remember here we are only interested in critical points that fall on this interval, so we need to double check if that does occur. 4 is between negative 1 and 5, so we will use it. The next step is to evaluate f of x, our original function, at each of the critical points and the endpoints. I find it easiest to make a table of values here and that helps me keep myself organized. So I'm going to list in numerical order each of my endpoints and my critical point, in this case only one that falls between. So here I'm going to find f of negative 1 by taking negative 1 and replacing it in for all the x's in my function. That comes out to be 26. Do the same thing for 4 and for 5. For f of 4, I have a value of negative 49, and for f of 5, I have a value of negative 46. All right, finally, we want to compare those values. The largest y value will be our absolute maximum, and the smallest y value will be our absolute minimum. So I can see that my smallest y value is here at negative 49. So my absolute minimum occurs at the point 4 comma negative 49. And my absolute maximum will be my largest y value, which is positive 26. So that will occur at the point negative 1, 26. So there we have our absolute minimum and our absolute maximum for this f of x. All right, guys, that does it for this video on finding absolute extrema. To see more examples of problems like these, catch us in the next video.